Is living overseas worth it? So in this video, I'm going to talk about whether living overseas is worth it. And before doing that, go over to adamfad.com, especially if you're an expert or a high net wealth individual. And a lot of people start thinking about their finances when they're going to move overseas. But when it comes to living overseas and moving overseas, working overseas, retiring overseas, people often ask, is it worth it? And obviously, it's a very broad question because most people think in terms of family, friends, financially, lifestyle, there's three or four or five different categories that people analyze. I moved overseas well over a decade ago now, originally from the UK, but I've lived now in uh, numerous countries, close to 10 countries now, including the UK. So uh, my perspective on this uh, is quite interesting for a lot of people, but obviously different people will get different experiences living overseas. And that's kind of the first point I would make, really. It does depend on what you're looking for and your specific circumstances. So, for example, if you're currently working at PwC or one of the big companies out there and you're just going overseas for a short time for a secondment, you know, six months uh, to a year or two years, hardly anyone that I've met seems to regret it because it's short term. You're going to come back to your home country and you're probably going to get paid more or the same. And even if you don't, You've got a great experience overseas. You might learn a new language or improve an existing one. So in that case, very few people regret it. Likewise, most people who go to study, very few people regret it. Even most people who retire overseas, I don't think most people regret it because they can always come back quite easily. Um, and likewise, when people go overseas when they're very young, seldom do they regret it because unless they get into a relationship and they stay too long, if things don't work out, they can always come back to their, their home country. Where things obviously are much more risky is if somebody has a family uh, or their career is already well underway and it's not just a short-term project and they're actually going overseas maybe to start a business or, or do something much more uh, high risk. So obviously it will depend on your circumstances. For me, it's well worth it and it has been well worth it. But in terms of some of the pointers I can make, in addition to what I've just said, I would also say that in general now, if you're from quite a high tax country, from a purely financial point of view, it does make sense to move overseas, at least to certain countries. So if you're, for example, uh, running an online business, uh, you can easily move it overseas to a lower tax jurisdiction. Obviously, make sure you're doing it all compliantly and legally. But I would say for most high net wealth individuals, it's absolutely worth it to move overseas to the right location. Um, and it usually works out in that circumstance. The people who usually don't like life overseas fall into numerous categories. Era, their expectations are too high. This usually happens when people are too idealistic about a country. So, for example, uh, these days, uh, because of the whole Korean wave and people watching K-pop and K-dramas, uh, there's plenty of people who go to Korea and they're disappointed by what they see. Likewise, in the 90s and 2000s, there are people into Japanese culture. They go to Japan and um, they're disappointed. Obviously, there's always been people who have been idealistic about the US and the UK as well. So that's the first thing. If people are too idealistic and their expectations are too high, seldom is it worth it to go overseas. Second of all, you shouldn't expect the same life overseas as back at home. You might be able to live a similar life, especially if you're a high net wealth individual and basically you're living in a bubble, which isn't always a negative thing. People assume it's always negative, but it isn't always the case that it's a negative thing. But in most situations, obviously you're gonna to have to take the rough with the smooth. There's gonna be good and bad things when you move overseas. So obviously uh, you're gonna to have to deal with those bad things as well. And also I've noticed there's a lot of people out there who they're running away from things. So if somebody's having a big problem in their home country, addiction and other issues, going overseas might not necessarily make those problems better. It can in certain cases if it stops people hanging out with certain kinds of people. But obviously if you're overseas and you're easily the kind of person who gets lonely, you might actually become more lonely, at least at the beginning. It's also very easy for people to get into a party lifestyle when they're overseas. So really it depends why you're coming overseas. If it's for a purely financial reason, it's easier to do the mathematical uh, you know, equation that the reality is the case that if you're offered more money to go overseas, it's probably going to be a better option unless the taxes and cost of living are higher. 
But if it's a social or lifestyle based uh, reason to move overseas, obviously there's certain uh, things that can go wrong and certain things that can go right. Uh, which leads me to my final point really, and that's that I've met several people who go overseas and they really like a certain country, but they don't like another country. So if you come overseas, let's say you're coming for a li lifestyle reason, you don't like the first country, you might like the second country. So obviously don't just give up on life overseas. So I think really for a lot of people living overseas makes a lot of sense, but it's a huge mistake to think it's a panacea and it's gonna make your life obviously better just because you're living overseas. Ultimately, you're still going to have problems. You're going to have new problems, in fact, from living overseas. But really, for a lot of people, they move overseas because they think there's actually benefits that outweigh those negatives. how long they want to invest and and uh, i did not have at all the feeling from any bank with which i had contact with that they they were interested in these things mm -hmm. whereas um, with you it was from the very beginning obvious to me that you had experience in these matters and also were interested in what i uh, wanted to achieve anyways i'm i'm very very pleased and positive uh, to say that i believe i've picked the right one um the results um in the last couple of years have have, have overreached my expectations by far um and um I see no reason um, why it should not continue. Of course, I can highly recommend uh, him as your financial advisor for now and for the future. Because hesitating is um, missing out. So I'm investing a lot in, in, in the Middle East market, but the uh, amount of returns I'm getting from there is very low as per the amount of returns I'm getting from uh, the investment uh, portfolio which uh, you made for me. Obviously, the best result in market right now is Adam. <laughs>